to depart in valor is the symbol of life to be remembered with respect in itself is life this is the story of a man who had tremendous courage determination and valor to touch the sky with glory a skillful daring and fearless air warrior who was loved and respected by one and all only few names in the indian air force evoke such awe and inspiration as the mention of air commodore mehar singh dso mvc mehar baba as he was fondly known to his friends and colleagues was one pilot who aroused instant admiration and respect in his colleagues and subordinates qualities that prompted the remarks of one of the junior officer air marshal asghar khan who later went on to become the chief of air staff of the pakistan air force to say squadron leader mehar singh was indeed a pilot of outstanding ability a man who was able to instill confidence in his juniors and bring out the best in them when i joined the indian air force in 1940 i was really impressed by two officers they were flight lieutenant mojumdar and mehr singh they were both very conscientious about their duties and they particularly looked after the young officers and airmen we all liked serving under them they were both very daring and excellent pilots they were really my role model throughout my service he was two years senior to me but he was a very delightful friend terrific fellow he was absolutely fearless flyer i think he was the most virulent ground leader i have met so far whatever he said would happen he was a very honest man down to earth but at the same time very large hearted born at lalpur on the 20th of march 1915 mehar singh had his early education at lalpur after which he joined the government college lahore he was a good hockey player and loved adventure after passing out from air force college cranwell england mehar singh was commissioned as a pilot officer on the 1st of august 1936 and posted to number 1 squadron of the indian air force number 1 squadron at that time was based in north west frontier province mehar singh was immediately initiated into operations against the frontier tribesmen he flew the operational missions with devastating passion flying over 100 hours in one month he rarely took notice of adverse weather and did his flying even in bad weather conditions very soon he made a name as a daring and skillful flyer at this very time during one of his operational sorties while mehar singh was attacking the concentration of a force of tribesmen in the valley of shider his aircraft was hit by ground fire which punctured its fuel tank resulting in engine failure mehar singh made a skillful crash landing in the mountainous rocky valley but the undercarriage of his wapiti sheared off and the biplane was destroyed fortunately the bombs in the aircraft did not explode mehar singh and his gunner crawled and extricated themselves from the wreckage and tactfully escaped from the dangerous sharp shooting tribesmen who had converged onto the crash site in pursuit of the crew They traversed throughout the night in the hostile valley without any maps. Early in the morning, they reached a tiny post manned by Tochi scouts. This accident would have shaken anybody's nerves, but Mehar Baba not only joined the squadron but was airborne the same very morning attacking the tribesmen again. After the outbreak of Second World War, Mehar Singh was tasked to form number 6 squadron of the Indian Air Force at Trichinopoly. 
On the 1st of December 1942, the squadron was formed and was equipped with Hawker Hurricane aircraft. By November 1943, Mayor Singh completed the training of his aircrew in the role of reconnaissance, strafing and bombing. Lord Louis Mountbatten had been appointed the Supreme Commander of the Southeast Asia Command. The Allied forces decided to mount the fresh offensive in northern Burma with General Stilwell's forces advancing from Lido jungle terrain and the 14th Army commanded by Lieutenant General William Slim mounting increased pressure from Arakan coast. 5th Indian Division advanced towards Mongdo and the 7th Indian Division made a thrust towards Butidong. The Japanese sprang a surprise by cutting the road from the rear and surrounding them. The 7th Indian Division scattered into small splinter groups fighting for their survival. Number 6 Squadron, under the command of squadron leader Meher Singh, was ordered to move to the Arakan front to help the Allied ground forces. Late in the evening, the AOC, India Command, rang up Meher Singh and asked him to come to Delhi for a briefing before the squadron leaves for Burma. Meher Singh had his operational priorities which took precedence over everything else. Before dawn, Meher Singh took off in his hurricane from Trichinopoly and flying 900 kilometers reached Delhi for a briefing by the commander who was surprised to see him walking into his office the very next morning. In those days, flying 900 kilometers in the dark hours of early morning without any navigational aids was in itself a landmark. On the 1st of November 1943, number 6 squadron landed at Cox's Bazaar airfield on the Arakan front and immediately started strafing and bombing the Japanese forces as well as providing vital reconnaissance information about their movements to the Indian Army. Number 6 squadron literally became the eyes of the 14th Army. This resulted in the 7th Indian Division gradually regrouping itself and advancing towards Butidong. By the end of November, the 5th Indian Division advanced and occupied Mongdo. Number 6 Squadron's hurricanes were constantly seen in the Arakan Valley, shaking the dust as they passed low over the trees and hilltops, totaling 1,350 flying hours. They wore out the airfield and the squadron had to operate from alternate strips. Meher Baba's hurricanes flew in pairs, the leader undertaking reconnaissance and attack, while number two nicknamed Weaver protected his tail. Field Marshal Slim remarked in his book, Defeat into Victory, I was particularly impressed with the conduct of the squadron led by young Sikh squadron leader Meher Singh, they were a happy and an efficient unit. Meher Singh led almost every mission of his squadron himself. He was awarded the coveted Distinguished Service Order and became the only Indian Air Force officer to receive this unique honor. Air Marshal Sir John Baldwin flew down on 15th March 1944 to present the decoration in person to Meher Baba. Lord Louis Mountbatten also came down to Arakan to congratulate the entire crew of Number no. 6 Squadron. He led Number no. 6 Squadron to perform every imaginable task and the whole time he was in the forefront. He was genuinely and truly my role model. I looked up to him. He was a man of character. He had never prepared to compromise. And what is more, he was down to earth and on top of that, he was downright honest. He kept in touch with all officers, particularly junior officers, to mold them in the tradition of the Air Force. Hard taskmaster, but excellent teacher. He taught us the very basic in flying skill. Mayor Singh was an outstanding human being 
and also an outstanding daredevil pilot. Whatever was task in hand had the utmost priority as far as he was concerned. In 1947, when India became independent, Meher Singh was promoted to the rank of Air Commodore and as Air Officer Commanding was put in command and control of air operations in India. His first priority was the airlift of refugees from Pakistan. With very meager transport resources of only one Dakota squadron at his disposal, the Indian Air Force put in a commendable effort airlifting the migrants and providing supply of food and medical aid round the clock. At times, Meher Baba had the langar cooked at his own house and supply dropped the same to the refugee camps. Shortly after independence, tribal mercenaries clothed, fed and armed by Pakistan with some Pakistani military commanders leading them invaded the Kashmir Valley. After occupying Uri and Baramula, they were heading for Srinagar. It was neither feasible nor possible for the Indian Army to reach and save Srinagar by land route. The Indian Air Force was suddenly faced with its first big challenge to airlift the troops into Kashmir Valley, which was surrounded by high-range mountains from all sides. Also, it was not known whether the raiders had occupied the Srinagar airfield or not. Added to this was the unpredictable bad weather conditions. Undaunted by all these problems and the adverse circumstances, AOC of No. 1 Operational Group Air Commodore Meher Singh undertook the task of airlifting troops, arms, ammunition, equipment and supplies into the valley. Meher Singh led from the front. He flew many of the pioneering and daunting missions himself, setting an example for others to follow. Srinagar Airport was surrounded by the enemy and was within the range of their heavy guns. Number 12 Squadron, with the old Dakota aircraft, which had no provision of breathing oxygen from the air crews at that high altitude, nor any facility for pressurization, were carrying out these sorties throughout the day and sometimes even late at night. Meher Singh also mustered the help of civil aviation Dakotas and inspiring them to the cause he created a sort of air bridge between Delhi and Srinagar. Troops, armor and logistic supplies were being flown to Srinagar in a regular stream. Within five days, an entire brigade was airlifted to Srinagar. Our Spitfire, Harvard and Tempest aircraft provided air cover to the Dakotas and also kept on hitting the enemy targets. The Indian Army, after reaching Srinagar, recaptured Baramula on the 8th of November and Uri on the 13th of November. On the other side, the raiders had made a heavy thrust towards Punch and surrounded it from all sides. Punch was only reachable by air, but there was no airstrip for landing. Most of the equipment paradropped over there was lost as it went into steep ravines of the valley. A very small rough and kacha airfield was prepared after a week's day and night effort by the army and the refugees gathered in Punch. As usual, Meher Singh flew there and landed in a Harvard first and the very next day he piloted the first Dakota carrying Air Vice Marshal Subroto Mukherjee and landed there in the most challenging circumstances and conditions. And then the inspired pilots of number 12 squadron started doing 10 to 12 sorties per day, airlifting troops, weaponry and supplies. On their return flights, the aircraft brought back injured troops and refugees. The enemy brought heavy guns and started shelling Poonch airfield. Mersing planned airlift of 25-pounder guns by Dakota aircraft and in order to avoid the danger of being hit by the enemy fire, planned and executed the landing of Dakotas at night with the help of kerosene machals lighting the runway. Two other Dakota aircraft were kept circling over the airfield to confuse the enemy. 
and then Meher Baba inflicted an unexpected and lethal blow to the enemy which surprised them completely. He carried a large number of 250 pound bombs in Dakota aircraft and flying low in the mountainous area. These bombs were rolled out of rare fuselage doors and dropped over the enemy. This daring, innovative and improvised carpet bombing proved very effective and demoralized the raiders. Punch was saved and freed from the enemy. But Leh was still under the siege of the enemy. After their defeat in Punch, the raiders made a revengeful retaliation with full force in the Leh area. The average height of the hills around Leh being approximately 20,000 feet, Dakota aircraft were incapable of crossing these hill ranges without the facility of pressurization and de-icing equipment. Mayor Singh opted for a rather dangerous alternative deciding to fly low in between the hills through the zigzag valley. Flying through the thick clouds and suddenly coming across a blind hill required tremendous courage, reflexes and flying skill to cross through the hazardous valley. On 24th May 1948, Meher Singh piloted the first Dakota himself, carrying Major General K.S. Thamaya, who later became the Chief of Army Staff to make a historic landing at Leh, the highest airfield in the world at the height of 11,500 feet. And then the inspired and courageous pilots of number 12 squadron followed suit, airlifting sufficient troops, armament and logistic supplies to Leh, which helped the army in pushing the raiders out of the Leh Valley. By the end of November, Indian Army occupied Dras and Kargil and cleared the entire Leh Road. As Air Officer Commanding of No. 1 Operational Group, Air Commodore Meher Singh flew almost all the aircraft of the Indian Air Force. He was omnipresent because he would appear anywhere, anytime, supervising and even flying himself, not only fighters, even other Dakota aircraft which was the mainstay for carrying men and material, which was vital for the operations. I cannot think of any other individual in any of the services who contributed to successful operations. The most difficult tasks that were needed to be done were done by him. For example, his landing in Punch was a masterpiece. And I was in that flight with him. He never asked his subordinates do anything which he had not done himself or he was not prepared to do. The more difficult the task, the less inclined he was to throw it on to somebody else and supervise or whatever. No, he never did passing the buck. Perhaps the story of Kashmir would have been very different if it was not for the Indian Air Force and its daring pilots led by a man who could get the best out of his subordinates by setting an example himself. Punch saving can be attributed to only one man, I think, and that's Air Commodore Mayer Singh, whom we lovingly called Baba. It was decided that we'll carry the bombs in the Dakota aircraft. Fusing was done in the aircraft, we used to carry six to eight, 250 pounders. Six aircrafts, no one had been screened, there was no possibility. The maps were basically very inaccurate. The briefing was done on a map, on a sketch map, and Air Commodore Mayer Singh led those six aircraft, and amazingly we all landed safely and we took off safely, and that saved Leh. Not only Leh, it saved the whole of Ladakh. In the history of aviation, there are very few events to match this achievement, said Air Chief Marshal P. C. Lal. Whenever a VIP or a VVIP, including the Prime Minister, visited any of the operational domains, Mehr Singh used to pilot the aircraft himself. On the 31st of January 1949, ceasefire was declared and the line of control was established. The Valley of Kashmir shall always cherish the heroic deeds of Meher Baba and the brave and dedicated pilots of No. 12 Squadron. Air Commodore Meher Singh was awarded Mahavir Chakra. 
Air Commodore Meher Singh left Air Force in September 1948. On the 11th of March 1952, he was killed in an unfortunate air accident. I would say that his death was a tremendous loss to the Air Force. He was one of the makers of the Air Force spirit. He created a spirit in the Air Force. And that was our strength. I don't think we have produced a man in the Air Force who had done so much in so little a time to energize the young to do things and even if it came to it, lay down their lives for the sake of the country. In his book, My Days with the Air Force, Air Chief Marshal P. C. Lal writes, It was a great loss. He was an uncut diamond of sterling value, but without the spit and polish of sophistication. Meher Baba's leadership, his extraordinary courage and determination in the face of danger, his professional competence and his sustained effort got the best out of the men that he led. Meher Baba's unmatched flying skill, daredevilry, down-to-earth nature, warm and friendly behavior, as well as protective approach toward its subordinates, made him one of the most loved and respected commanders. The mere mention of his name infuses enthusiasm and patriotism in the young pilots even today.